I chose this profession of medicine as early as when I was a school student. That was in the late 50s. My father was one of the earliest doctors of the city of Coimbatore, which is the industrial city in southern India. I used to watch him, and I also used to admire the way the, the people, the public in general, appreciated the profession, the noble profession. So as a, as a young student, whenever I used to go with him in his car, back home in India, the downtown area used to have a small little extension in front of the every house, which we used to call it something like a bench-like thing, we call it as a thin neck. People will be sitting there in the evenings because they never had any other entertainment, no television, nothing. They'll be sitting there and talking to each other. As his car enters the road, just looking at the car, everyone sitting on that kind of a bench-like thing will stand up in respect. That is the kind of a respect they had. I was told, I was in born at that time in 1942, there was an epidemic of plague in Coimbatore. There are only three doctors, including my father. When the whole part of the city left Kaibato, and my father and his two other friends, doctors, they stayed back. And they were serving the patients for a long, long time, almost for about three to four months, as long as the epidemic was continuing. And they did a very great job, I believe. Since then, the public at large, they were just treating these doctors like a demigod. So that's the kind of a respect. So that is one part of it is the respect what you get from the public in general, the recognition, the appreciation. Beyond that, the satisfaction of doing something good is something in this profession. So I chose medical profession even as a school student. My first inspiration was my father, Dr. E. Ramnathan my mother, who nurtured me in the initial days when I was a medical student. Once I came back and got married to my wife, Dr. Radha, as we were very highly successful practitioners, medical practitioners in Coimbatore, we always had an urge to do something more, something beyond. And it was at that time, we had the divine call from none other than the Shankaracharyas of Kanchi who are trying to tell the medical profession, the doctors per se, take a little bit of your time and do some sort of a service for the less privileged. You work for yourself the rest of the days, maybe a couple of hours once in a week. And that appealed to me and my brother. So there was a very strong influence from the Shankaracharyas. And right to the day one, when we started the moment with his blessings, started a purely a secular healthcare initiative, open to all, irrespective of caste, creed, or religion, they've been guiding us. Next inspiration came, of course, by my wife, who was kind of totally behind the entire activity. And my friends, friends in the medical profession, a handful of them, when we all joined together, we were all in our mid-twenties and late-twenties. So that kind of a comradery, kind of a team spirit which we could develop even at that point of time. And after that, it was the, the donors. The donors who came forward, the sponsors and supporters from literally every walk of life. It was amazing. And later, in the late 90s, it was the Shankara I Foundation United States. My friends, Divegoba is here, Murli Krishnamurti, Sridhar, Sundar Radhakshan, all of them together, they started Shankara I Foundation USA, primarily to tell the people here the good work that is happening. Nowadays, even good work needs a lot of publicity. There has to be an awareness building mechanism, which was done with total commitment and passion. So these are the kind of inspirations which we have been getting year on year. And of course, the patients. The, the reward what we get from the patients is yet another motivating factor. So there are multiple factors. 
put together have taken me, my wife, my friends, the team of Shankara in this direction. It was in the year 1977. You know, those days we always used to have a second-hand car, repair it and reuse it. I'm talking about back in India. I had an ambassador. I live in a residential locality in Coimbatore, parallel and perpendicular planned city. My next road, there is a workshop, automobile workshop, where I had given my car for a repair. This happened in the month of March. The workshop man calls me and says, look, doc, your car is ready. You can come and pick it up. So I went there in the evening to pick up the car. And bang opposite that workshop, I saw a big building which was nearing completion. I asked the manager of the workshop, what is this? And he said, it is going to be a Kamakshi temple being built by the devotees of the Shankaracharyas. And you also did tell me that they are planning to have a free clinic for the poor people in front of this temple. It immediately struck me that, can I, can I do something if it's a free work? Can my wife join me and do it? But I didn't know anyone, either in the Shankaracharya Mat or in the Kamakshi temple. The very next day, I was just going to my clinic, my routine work. I stopped in between, there's a small little Lord Muruga temple where I just went for darshan. I was just coming around and saw this gentleman standing there by name Pattavira Mayer, the trustee of Kamakshiman temple. He was in his 60s those days. I could easily identify him, but he would not know me. I was hardly 29 years. I went and told him, I saw your building. I was told that you're going to have a free clinic. If it's a free clinic, me and my wife would like to join and do something. He immediately said, Doc, it's all God sent you. Come. In 1970, the Acharyas came to Kaibato. They were trying to tell the doctors. And all the senior doctors did accept. And now when the building is nearing completion, I go and call them. Nobody is coming forward. Now you have come forward. Let us start next week. This is what he told me. I told him no. I said, I don't want to start with an initial enthusiasm and then stop after some time. I told him, give me three months. Let us look at the loopholes in this system. Try and fill it up and then start. He immediately spontaneously agreed. He said, Doc, it's your baby. You plan it. You take three months and let us start. He gave total freedom. Normally, when you want to start something new, you'll always look around. Is there any precedence? Is someone doing a job like this? Can I do better? But in mid-70s and late-70s, there was no precedence to such an activity in India. If you take the healthcare pendulum, on one end of the pendulum, there was these government hospitals. On the other end, there was private clinics and nursing homes. In between, there is nothing like non-governmental voluntary healthcare initiatives. To that extent, I had to plan myself. I had to design. So I got hold of 10 of my close friends of the same age group, doctors, and 10 volunteers, and the movement was started on 21st May, 1977. I always say that the common saying is, if someone is doing something good or successful, there is a woman behind. I, I beg to differ and say, a woman who is not behind, neither in front, but always by the side. And that happened as fortunate. My wife, Dr. Radha, a brilliant doctor, an anesthesiologist by speciality, she had a passion to serve. And, uh, you know, when you have to take up a course like this, unless and until you have the total support of the family, nothing will happen. I was very fortunate that Radha came in wholeheartedly. She wanted to be as active as possible right from the day one. I fondly recollect, we used to go to, we used to call that as medical centers those days. Not a single day she has missed working in the medical center. That is the kind of a passion. Passion towards the patients, 
and especially the less privileged, she had a very spontaneous outburst of love towards them. So with all this, she made the best combination. Every small little detail we used to discuss, every way forward we used to discuss, every opportunity we used to discuss, and that really created a good platform to take it forward. In fact, at every step, there has been something or other. The starting, Shankar told me when we started the medical center, to see the patient, give them medicine, charge 50 paisa. Just 50 paisa. And right across that medical center, there was a bank. And we opened a SB account, savings bank account, with 5 rupees, which is the corpus. If that day's doctor has seen 20 patients, he would have collected 10 rupees and that would be deposited into the bank. If the next day's doctor is seeing around 30, he would have collected 15 rupees, more money. It will get deposited there. This kind of a small, literally drops of water. And the feeling when we opened the first small little bank account for this medical center, and when hundreds of patients started coming in for primary health care, it's very memorable. Later, when we decided on eye care, then my neighbor gifted five and a half acres of land in Coimbatore. I said, take it. What are you running? What are we going to do with this? A small little trust. I still remember the day when we went there. It was all marshy land, full of shrubs everywhere. We were quite... Um, I should say that we got the right line of thinking at that time. We just dug a bow well, got a lot of water. I requested all my friends, 10 of them, to bring 10 coconut saplings and plant along the periphery and put the name planted by so-and-so. A friend from Bangalore brought all the avenue trees. Another friend from a place called Pulachi brought in all the medicinal trees on the other side. Believe me, before we could put one single brick on this campus, we had planted the greenery. Today, around 40 to 50,000 birds are there. I was one of the greenest campus in Coimbatore. And what an amount of, I, I would never forget how did we plan to plant those saplings. So, like every step, when we received the first pair of eyes, when we started the Shankar Eye Bank, my friend Pratap Gogoldas, the Gujaratis and Jains and Coimbatore were the first donors. In 1985, we broke the ice, I mean ICE. Pratap's aunt was admitted in our hospital, private hospital. He calls me in the night about 2 o'clock and calls me and says, uh, Ramani, my aunt has passed away. I said, sorry about it, Pratap. He said, ice. I said, don't worry, pass the phone to the staff. I will ask her to arrange for some ice. I thought he's asking for ICE ice. He shouted back and said, what the hell? We want to donate the ice. E-Y-E-S. Tell you, it just went up my spine, the feeling. Very first eye donation we received. Like that, every moment, every step in the growth of the organization, it has been a milestone. Uh, literally, the human interest stories do happen day in and day out. I'll just share with you what happened in the year 1996. We get a lot of volunteers from various countries coming and working with us. In 96, there was a girl by name Jennifer Travis from the state of Utah. She's a Mormon. Mormon is a subsect in Christianity where the religion says, after you qualify, go and serve somewhere. Then you come back and start your career. Having heard about Shankara, she came all the way from Utah to Coimbatore, supported by Rotary. She spent six months with us. Almost she became part of us. At the end of the six months, she went back to Chennai to take the flight. And en route, she went to a village near a place called Velour to visit an orphanage. There she saw a two-year-old child by name Michael. 
story behind Michael was very pathetic. I believe he was born in that Burgur forest, deep inside a tribal hamlet. And soon after the birth of the child, the mother died. The illiterate, ignorant villagers thought he is an evil child and poured a concoction into the eyes to cure him of the evilness. He was blinded. Jennifer has seen us doing transplants even in as early as 1996, when we were receiving a pair of eyes once in a week, now we get every day. She cancelled her trip and came back with this boy and asked his doc, can we do something? We examined him, only one eye had very little chance. We kept Mikey for three months, waiting for a young and good donor eye. Did the transplant, third day after the bandages were removed. The boy was inside the room. He slowly opened the door to see what this kid was doing. Believe me, the child was sitting on the cot. He was keeping his hand in front of his operated eye and he was just moving it up and down. The child was seeing light and movement for the first time in his life. Could you imagine what would have been our feeling at that time? Millions will not give you that satisfaction. Normally from Kanchi Mat, Whenever these elderly priests need an eye care, they Shankaracharya used to send him only to Kaimato. There was an elderly person, priest. And when we were about to remove the bandage for Michael, he came and sat on the floor. And this man was saying, he said, Michael, I would pray for your vision. And he started chanting a sloga called Aditya Hrudayam, which is chanted for good health. We were all in tears on that day. This is something which is the reward for having invested our time, our energy, our resources, our expertise, something unparalleled. Well, uh, challenges are multiple challenges at every level. The initial days, it was all more of uh, self looking at ourselves, our strengths and weaknesses. We are all young, try to understand things. It was a learning process. Looked at others and tried to learn things. Identifying people who can be like-minded people. But in those initial phases, even the society would become judgmental at times because we are not yet proved ourselves. But every step we need to prove ourselves. Challenges beyond the sense financial, naturally for any growing institution. That too, it's a charitable institution. Those days, we never had the thought of self sustenance It's purely a donor dependency. So it's a financial challenge. Next came the human resource, the critical component. So right from creating a simple human resource into your human capital, it's a challenge. Something which now we are enjoying. Shankara now has 1,800 uh, employees full-time. And we do not have attrition. And all of them are groomed over the years. That's a challenge. So these are all multiple challenges we have faced, financial human resource. Beyond this, there are certain procedural formalities back home in India. When you have to do certain things, you need to go for so many permissions. Sometimes it is a bit frustrating. As you said, why did I choose to do this? But well, challenges are there, there are opportunities. And once we are able to get over that, there is a sense of satisfaction. It's so wonderful. Uh, we are amazed at the volunteers in Shankarai Foundation, the leaders and the volunteers. It's such a bunch of lively people. And what a passion they have. What a passion they have. In fact, when we come here and look at them, we go back inspired and said, look, we need to do much more, looking at them. At least there we are seeing the beneficiaries every day. Here, across the globe, they are sitting, they don't even see the beneficiaries. For them to get passionately involved, that needs a lot of fun. We are amazed. We are in the East Coast, New Jersey volunteers, did a great job. It was a wonderful banquet organized. Met some like-minded uh, people in uh, New York as well. Went to Seattle. Microsoft was a grand success. Suveen had his friends in Microsoft. And of course, a meeting, smaller meeting was arranged in Amazon as well. Now we are here in the Bay Area. 
So this is like homecoming for us in the Bay Area. So the volunteers are an amazing bunch of people. We enjoy. It's like an extended family for us. Nothing short of that. Yes, the next three hospitals are coming up in uh, Indore. That is for the state of Madhya Pradesh. Hyderabad, and that is for the state of Telangana. And Panvel near Bombay, which is for the state of Maharashtra. Indoor, we had a we have received a beautiful piece of land. Construction is on. Almost twenty percent of the construction is over. We hope to complete it and inaugurate it by November 2019. Hyderabad, the government has given a beautiful piece of uh, land um, close to uh, a place called Gajiboli, where the construction work has to start. Perhaps in another month's time. And that would be ready in another 15 months from the time we start the construction. Panvel, already the construction started. That's for the state of Maharashtra. There are a lot of tribal villages surrounding Panvel, which are our target group for the free eye care work. And the construction work has started. All the three are going to be that same 80-20 model. 80% being the free patients. 20% of the paying patients and then making it self-sustaining over a period of five years. Um, they, they can help us a lot for that matter. My young presidents, um, Dr. Kaushik and Bharat, they have brought in technology to the advantage, making the our efforts much more effective reaching out to ma many people. They are brought in at not only the regular operation level, even in the medical review and administration at the field level as well. Now the volunteers from the Bay Area being the silicon uh, field here, they can do a lot. A person can volunteer from their field of activity. Maybe he or she is an IT expert they can try and guide us. Someone who is in um, uh, beyond technology, there are various other fields as well they can participate. But for that, ideally, instead of just saying what is these precise area where they can help, your visit to the hospital is mandatory. I always tell all our volunteers and friends, any like-minded people, if you come to India, Come and spend a couple of days with us. Be as our guests. See the operations. And you yourself will unfold and say, this is an area, hey, I can just try and help you out. So volunteers are most welcome to pitch in and be a part of this mission. Dear donors, supporters, well-wishers, and the volunteers with so much of energy and enthusiasm, Together, all of us have built this movement. Over four decades have gone. Millions and millions of beneficiaries are getting the gift of vision. All of us have played our own role. Much more has to be done. There is a huge need. Still, there is a lot of backlog. Let us move forward. We need to strengthen the existing institutions. We need to expand into new institutions as well. We need to make sure that the high quality, high ethical values of Shankara, for which every one of you are part of it, is maintained and taken forward to the next level. Please support the new hospitals. Becoming a founding donor in any of these hospitals will be uh, perpetuating yours and your family's name in a good cause forever. Please become a founding donor. All of you are supporting the surgeries on birthdays and wedding days, etc. Beyond that, the new institutions, as well as the old institutions which need refurbishing, maybe in terms of equipment, in terms of infrastructure, your participation will be of immense value. Let us just see that how do we take the movement, the Shankara Care movement, to the next level. We can, we did it. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you.